accomplish, you have to understand your landscape. Understand the industry that you want to participate in. Understand what other suppliers are out there. Uh, inevitably, uh, there's a lot of suppliers doing a lot of things. And what so I, I like to stress to suppliers is finding that niche. Finding that area where, hey, there's not very many suppliers uh, in this particular area that are either look like me or have the same gender as me or a veteran or LGBTQ or, or anything like that or, or disabled. So finding those suppliers or finding that niche or that industry or service uh, or producing of parts uh, where there's not a lot of suppliers. And I think that's very important. I think understanding that it's a process. People say supplier diversity program and that type of thing. At Toyota, we look at it from a process standpoint. I personally look at programs as having an endpoint. Endpoints uh, are, are not part of the supplier diversity uh, initiative or the stream, if you will. We have two philosophies basically at Toyota, continuous improvement and respect for people. A tier one supplier is a supplier that we have a direct business uh, relationship with. In elementary terms, I'm cutting a check to that supplier who's doing some business directly with us. A tier two supplier would be a supplier that that tier one supplier is doing business with with another supplier. Uh, inevitably to make some uh, maybe subcomponent parts to that tier one and then the tier one produces parts to us. So that's kind of the, the, the tier one, tier two relationship, if you will. When we announced that we were going to build our, our uh, San Antonio, Texas truck facility, one of our suppliers, uh, Rosa Santana, she had a staffing company. Uh, actually, she wasn't even a supplier to us at the time. She had the foresight. Uh, she's based out of El Paso. She went and bought some, some office space right across the street from where we were actually going to build our plant. So really, as the plant really hadn't even gotten started or they were just getting started, she had the forward thinking, if you will to go put an office across the street, uh, knowing that we were gonna have a supplier park. And a supplier park uh, would be a list of, or a group of 22 suppliers or 23 suppliers that we have that are on our property that will be supplying to us. So while she couldn't do the business with us directly at Toyota at the time, she had the foresight to say, hey, those 22 suppliers are gonna need people. And she had a staffing company. And so she built her staffing company or put an office in uh, right across the street from us. So when those 22 suppliers needed staffing, she was in their door and in their face. So she did a really good job with that and she learned the Toyota way. She learned our core philosophies of respect for people and continuous improvement. And we saw that from afar and how she was developing, uh, becoming a great supplier to our 22 suppliers ever on the, in the supplier park. And then we were looking for an opportunity to increase our diverse spend. Uh, and we had a great opportunity for a supplier to come in and create truck beds for us, or assemble truck beds for us. Uh, and we thought, what about Rosa? And so we approached her and we told her we had a great opportunity for her uh, that would be good for her. But she said, I have no manufacturing experience. So this is somebody who didn't know how to use a, use a handgun or, or pick up parts or anything like that. Uh, but we said, we think you can do it with our help. And we, uh, we, we provided some assistance to her. Uh, and so today, Rosa is not only a, a good staffing supplier uh, to us on, at the tier two level, uh, but she's also a great supplier to us at the tier one level, creating truck beds for us in our San Antonio, Texas plant. It's a flat out book called The Toyota Way. And it explains things with only about our company, but they also apply to the supply base as well. So that's a publication that a lot of people read, a lot of universities uh, use that. Um, uh, it's just a way, it's not the way, uh, but I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things. That, and they really apply to, to, uh, to, to most of the automotive industry, the things that we're doing, they're no different than, than my Detroit 3 colleagues or uh, my Nissan colleagues or my Honda colleagues or anybody like that. They're, they're just standard type things that need to, need to, uh, to be thought about uh, in terms of uh, ways of doing business with, uh, with our companies within the automotive industry.